<laughs> Hello friends, once again from Berlin, ESD. We have with us Raj Tripranjo and I mean nobody in India uh, require any introduction for him. We have with us from Mexico, Dr. Joya and our own Dr. Rucha Mehta from Ahmedabad. So with this, I want to ask with Dr. Ralph regarding the SGLT2 because we know that's very hot cake in our country also. So sir, your opinion for the SGLT2. Yep. So this has been actually a very hot topic here at the ESD. There have been a number of symposia uh, that have uh, now sort of been reviewing uh, the data that we now have uh, an indication uh, from the Canvas study uh, in Europe. Uh, we're pending the indication in the U.S., so there was a lot of discussion about the cardiovascular benefits uh, of uh, Canvas. Uh, and again, the results are a little bit different because each of the three points of MACE were decreased, but none of the three points were independently statistically significant, significant. but taken as a whole, they were decreased. So that's good, but a little bit different from what we saw with infoglyphosin. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion sort of off the cuff, so to speak, about the DECLARE study, uh, which uh, we none of us have seen the results of yet, uh, but we're waiting for it. it. It will be at the American Heart in November, but that was also positive. So this is very encouraging. So now we have three uh, studies with SGLT2 inhibitors uh, indicating a cardiovascular benefit in people who've already had an established cardiovascular event. So, do you say that after declared study, will this the first choice of after metformin with the patient with established CVD, the SGLT2 should be the choice? So, it will have for AMPA, DAPA, and KENA for all three, or will it not be for all three? So, I would agree almost with you, okay. because you said after metformin. I would say before metformin. Okay. So, metformin is number four in my list of good drugs. Uh, so I would put GLP-1, pioglitazone, and SGLT-2 inhibitors ahead of metformin, and uh, endocrinologists probably have their own particular preference. Some people like the GLP-1 receptor agonist, particularly in overweight people. Some people like the SGLT-2 inhibitors. Uh, I particularly like pioglitazone, and I like these Me drugs. Me too. Hey, all right. <laughs> You're a smart guy. <laughs> so Dr. Hoya, how about in Mexico? Are you also using the SGLT-2 inhibitors? And in comparison to the Indian scenario? Uh, yes, um, we have the, still the issue about informing. The problem is that uh, many of our process, professors, even on endocrinology, they, they don't use I mean, the GLP-1s. So it's a huge difference between private practice and public practice. In private practice, most of your patients are on GLP-1. Oh. And as you, as, as, uh, yes. Um, uh, regarding the uh, SLG2 inhibitors, probably um, <clears throat> glyphosin is the more used in Mexico by far. I mean, studying the United States probably in Bocana, the uh, is, is the is the more is the more more used. Also, we're using a lot of yes. glyphosin, a lot more than the others. Yeah, so, like that, so what about this dual, which is GLP-1 and GAP-1 agonist, which is coming? And I mean, it's the future of yeah. uh, diabetes treatment. Yeah, so that's actually a, a, a good, good topic, you know, for discussion because this is now very exciting. Uh, I have to say, uh, I was very skeptical that these dual agonists would work because glucagon is part of the ominous octet. Yes. So when L-glucagon goes up, that drives hepatic glucose production. So I was always concerned that you couldn't find the right dose of GLP-1 to offset the diabetogenic effect of the glucagon. But the companies have clearly found the appropriate molar ratio, so there's a lot of excitement about these dual agonists. Now, why is there the excitement? So glucagon is a very powerful appetite suppressant. GLP-1 is also a powerful appetite suppressant. And there seems to be some additive, maybe even synergistic uh, effect. And there may also be some special effects to re uh, sort of remove uh, hepatic fat. Uh, so for people with NASH, uh, this may be a particularly efficacious uh, combination. And virtually every company <laughs> out there has at least one of them. Uh, Novo just published a paper in Diabetes Care they actually looked at the triple therapy. So they had GIP, GLP-1, and, and, and uh, receptor agonist and glucagon. Uh, but what they showed is adding GIP to GLP-1 and glucagon had no benefit, additional benefit, in terms of uh, A1C reduction or weight. Uh, so people have gone even beyond the 
the duel. But right now, I would say we're we're, we're going to see a, an explosion in the next one and a half to two years of the duel. And, and you know, yeah. Ag, yeah. Uh, so they showed the data this morning with Dr. Nauf, and uh, what they showed is there's a very robust decrease in the HbA1c, but the weight loss was staggering. At the higher dose, there was a weight loss of about 11 kilograms. Uh, but they also showed in the Lily molecule, the LNY molecule, there is a uh, five times more potent GIP action versus GLP-1 is what they showed on the paper. So would you speculate what is the mechanism of this weight loss in HbA1c? Are we seeing the GLP-1 or GIP? I don't know if you could enlighten yeah. us. So I, I think this is a centrally uh, uh, mediated uh, mechanism of action. And in fact, these studies were done uh, over a decade ago by Amlin. Mm -hmm. And uh, the original studies were done, of course, in rodents, but they looked at every combination of molecules. They uh, looked at PYY, they looked at uh, amylin, uh, which we have, of course, premletide. They looked at uh, GLP-1, they looked at uh, GIP, they looked at uh, glucagon. And in, in, uh, it's interesting, the most powerful combination was uh, amylin with uh, GLP-1. Now, it's interesting that that has not been carried forward into the clinical trials, and most people have focused on uh, the combination of glucagon and GLP-1. Uh, there are animal data to suggest that uh, glucagon also increases energy expenditure independent of its effect to suppress the appetite. Now, that's animal data. I'm a little bit skeptical as to whether that will translate to humans, and these studies are now being done at the Pennington with several of these uh, dual agonists. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what the results uh, you know, show, but even if there is some small increase in energy expenditure, I think the major benefit is going to be centrally appetite suppression, and it's an additive, as I said, even synergistic effect. It's consistent with the data that, that you just uh, mentioned that we're showing here uh, this morning. Very yeah. I mean, the Harmony trial, which was released yesterday, yeah. will you put some comments on it? Yeah, so uh, the Harmony study involved albuglutide and uh, GlaxoSmithKline GSK uh, actually withdrew sort of uh, their interest in yes. the molecule in the United States because the weight loss was not Very all easy. that impressive and the A1C drop was modest and not in the same league as uh, some of the other GLP-1 receptor uh, agonists. Uh, and a lot of credit to GSK, they actually did continue the cardiovascular study because when they initiated the metabolic studies, they thought they were going to be very positive. Uh, and even though they stopped the sort of marketing, uh, they continued the cardiovascular study, which was uh, the MACE endpoint, which was a very impressive reduction and interestingly, uh, it was all, uh, all of the improvement in MACE was due to a decrease in myocardial infarction, was which is a little different from some of the other ones. Uh, so the, the, the good part of the story is we have another GLP-1 receptor agonist that goes with the other long-acting GLP-1s, uh, mm -hmm. suggesting that at least the long-acting ones uh, do give you cardio protection in a high-risk group that's already had a vascular event. The Rewind study, which is uh, L Lily's uh, Trulicity, uh, will be winding up, yes. sort of rewind winding up uh, <laughs> soon. Uh, uh, I believe it'll be positive and basically say that this class has, and I think it's an anti-atherogenic effect because it takes about a year to see the effect, which is different from the SGLT2 inhibitors where you see the effect within the first three months in terms of cardiovascular protection. Great. Last word for Carmelina, which is going to be released today evening. I mean, uh, not talking about the results, yeah. but few what comments about that. Yeah, my expectations, it'll be zero. <laughs> <laughs> so I won't be disappointed because I'm not expecting anything. I think it will be uh, a negative study. I, I don't know the answer. Uh, yes, but, yes, I am just asking your comments. Yeah, yeah. Just my, for the study. my guess. And I think if it were positive, we would have heard something by now. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.